Hello everyone, welcome to the GOA Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and related topics on my channel, the GOA Ecologist. If you are new to our channel, please consider subscribing our channel and for the earlier videos, you can check our playlist section as well. And also for our paid courses, either you can download our app from the Play Store that is by the same name, the GOA Ecologist and look for the courses that we offer online or also you can go directly to our website thegeoecologist.com and you can check for yourself all the details are available there. Now in today's session on political geography we are going to discuss about very interesting concept of these classifications of the boundaries of different types in the world. So there are few scholars who gave different kinds of concepts and classification. Two of them are very prominent. One is called genetic classification of the boundary and one is called the morphological classification of the boundary. So in this session we are going to discuss both of them so don't go anywhere watch the video till the end to learn these two particular topics So now let's discuss and learn about the first classification that is the genetic or we say functional classification of the boundaries. So to understand this first of all we need to look into the timeline and also the scholar. So Richard Hartshorn who was a prominent political geographer and I'm sure if you have read the models and theories in geography so the concept of aerial differentiation coming from his work that is the book Nature of Geography written by him in 1939. So this American geographer gives an insight to this genetic and functional classification of the boundaries in 1930s around 1936 and alongside one more scholar that is Whittlesey and I'm sure if you have read the concept of sequent occupants or agricultural classification you'll hear the name Whittlesey's classification as well. So if you observe these two geographers these two scholars are well known for aerial differentiation approach regional geography and all those concepts in 1930s. So these are the people behind the classification of these boundaries. So one of the prominent scholar Richard Hartshorn is specifically known for the genetic or the functional classification of our political boundaries. So let's look into this. What does it say? So if you observe the political boundaries are based on the relationship that a boundary line had shared with the surrounding cultural landscape at the time of its demarcation. So while it is being demarcated what is the relationship between the two sides which is where the boundary is being created in between. So this is very important to understand. So here comes the picture that it is derived from the basic physical geography of the area. Now this idea of making boundaries on the physical geography is basically again the sequence that we say and coming from the division school of thought that sequence happens in the landforms in terms of development. So fluvial landforms if you observe and the river valleys that you observe. So I'm sure you have heard the name like antecedent, superimposed, consequent, these kind of different streams. So this is where the inspiration was drawn from to genetically classify these boundaries. So if you observe an analogy between the mechanics of a river development and dynamics of international boundaries is no doubt imperfect but it was drawn in this particular idea of the boundary creation. So if you observe this particular diagram sets it will give you the classification in a gist. So what is it? Antecedent boundary. What are these boundaries? Look here, this boundary between country A and B. So what does it look like? It looks like a gulf area. So pre-existing commonly corresponds to physical feature based boundaries like river, bay, lakes, mountains, right? Then if you observe the second kind of boundaries is called subsequent. So the analogy is coming from the river streams. So subsequent streams. So what does it showcase? This particular boundary between country A and B. It represents where two different kinds of settlement groups are meeting. So this is where the Yukmin concept, the zones of habitability and cultures. So culturally, ethnically separated people and then you have the superimposed ones. Now the word itself is one is imposed over the other, right? So if you have checked into the palimpsest concept and also the outside force creating boundaries, so it represents in colonial output, some treaty making the two sides separate. So country A is separated from B, although they may be culturally similar, but then there is a boundary created 
So this kind of boundary is called superimposed and then we have a country where you have relic boundary. Now the word relic or relic is for the old so it no longer a boundary in present but it has past imprints. So often an outcome of the political changes if you observe it's visible on the landscape. So these are the four major classifications of genetic nature, functional nature or we say physical nature. So if you observe some examples we can take for each of these categories. So first of all, let's look into antecedent boundaries. If you check the map of United States of America, Alaska and Canada, Australia, you'll find these kind of boundaries prevalent there. Then subsequent boundaries are very common in Eastern Europe. They are ethnically separated from each other. So there are numerous boundaries of subsequent types in Eastern Europe and also you'll find the same around the Central Asia and South Asia. Then you will find superimposed boundaries where in Africa, in India and Pakistan border, we'll find India and Bangladesh border, where an outside force in the beginning and then later on it was divided by a treaty. So this is called superimposition and then you'll find the relic or relict boundaries and one best example we can give is Berlin Wall built in 1961 right in the East Germany. So this is something which was very interesting concept right. So this is your genetic classification of these boundaries. So we can give some more examples from the world here and genetic political boundary types if you observe. So let's look into the antecedent type and example. So Malaysia and Indonesia. Now look at this particular Borneo. So you observe this Brunei here and then you have the Borneo here and this is separated out here. So you have the highlands separating it from Indonesia. Then what you observe is subsequent one. Now subsequent one if you see China and Vietnam. Now there is a similarity in culture on both the sides but ethnically they are separate entities and they have been created like this particular but they have this relationship going on and then what you have is the superimposed boundary. So this is the straight line that you see here particularly. So this is Indonesia and this is Papua New Guinea. Right. So if you observe this kind of boundary is created by a treaty between the two and then you have the Laos and Vietnam. So here Laos and Vietnam have an overlapping boundary area right which was very clearly during the Cold War and also Vietnam War very popular. But now what you see is just the imprint here. So it's like a relict boundary. Some of these examples exist in the world that we observe. Now some of the ethnic groups in Southwest Asia, if you check. So in Southwest Asia and Central Asia, you'll find these many ethnic groups. Azeri, Baluchi, Hazra, Kurd, Pashtun, Persian, Punjabis. Then you have Shiite Arab, Sindhi, Sunni Arab, Tajiks, Turkmen, Uzbek. These are different ethnic groups. And these ethnic groups have different sets of boundaries as you can see in the colors here. So these represent the subsequent type of boundaries. Right. Then further, let's look into the division of Cyprus. What does it represent? So Cyprus will give you an example of the treaties. Look here, British military bases then given to the Turks and Greeks. So it's clearly showing there is a buffer zone in between here. This buffer zone like a no man's land is controlled by UN. And then you have the northern part which is Turkish and southern part which is Greek area and then you have certain military bases here. So this is Cyprus here in Mediterranean Sea if you observe here. So these kind of examples are there of different kinds of boundaries. You can say functional classification or genetic classification of the boundaries. Now let's go ahead and look into the morphological classification of these boundaries. So morphological the word itself is morph basically is shape. So shape and pattern on the physical landscape. So these boundaries follow natural feature. Now in genetic classification this is largely an antecedent type. So when you look into antecedent type natural features are the major boundary natural landscape. So for example a river could be there a mountain could be there. So what we have is a classification of it and many times the thing is that it's also called artificial boundaries one which is not natural. So understand one very important thing here that remember boundaries could be natural or artificial is a false concept. It's a pseudo concept. Why is it so? Because boundaries are always created by human beings. It's interestingly a human centric concept. It's a human geography concept. Naturally there is nothing called a boundary. So all boundaries are man made. 
right we consider it as a boundary there is nothing called a boundary in natural system in ecological system ecological system if you remember principles of ecology there is a transition between two different different flora and fauna different two biomes which is called seral community transition zones isn't it there is no distinct boundary as in nature right so we observe here that most of these classifications talking about some are natural some are artificial actually in reality they are not so but for studying or for general connotation we then generally classify if there is a mountain we say it's a natural boundary or if we have created it it's called cultural boundary so mountain boundaries river as international boundaries lakes and straits and then you have forest swamp deserts so these could be potential boundary areas and this is what we say is morphological you can say it's coming from physical landscape from geomorphology so let's look into some of the examples now here you see Aksaichin glacier very important here for POK here then you have the China area here and then you have the Indian territory here so if you observe this particular area always in concern and specifically strategically very important for us Indians out here then if you observe South America here this river here this T point here is Paraguay here is Argentina and here is Brazil so you see this is a river demarcating the three countries then let's come to Bangladesh and also we observe that Bangladesh these river fronts right these rivers are very important here for us this Plateau area Meghalayan Plateau area and this is Bangladesh so some kind of natural boundary here also we observe in Bangladesh area then let's go to be the concept of geometric boundary so what is this geometric boundary this is very interesting concept coming from geometry so what is this basically these are ethnic boundaries geometric boundaries are nothing but it's a ethnic boundary not related to natural features so what instead it is it is basically talking about straight lines or the geometric lines that are creating boundaries between two nations two countries two states it could be circular or it could be a square so if it is geometrical shape it is called a geometrical boundary or a ethnic boundary which is very important so what do you observe examples from the world let's look into 49th parallel now look it is where is 49th parallel this is 49th parallel between Canada and US so what is this why is it important so in 1818 the United States and UK then including Dominion of Canada reached an agreement known as the convention of 1818 and where what happened look into this some territories were claimed by us and britain right if you see oregon and then you will have here this particular british territory as well right so this is that demarcates the separation so as a part of agreement both countries agreed to establish 49th parallel as the boundary between their respective territories so this is what this is a straight line virtually a straight line because we say it's a latitude right that's why it is a geometrical line then further if you observe Papua New Guinea this example this straight line that you see it's geometrical feature isn't it so if you observe the eastern border with Indonesia is a straight line because the island was invaded by Indonesia in 1962 since then this boundary was agreed upon by a treaty then if you observe further Canada Alaska border so if you observe the difference here is this straight line here right British Columbia Yukon and this is Alaska so this you will find another one where you see Canada Alaska border was set up by Anglo-Russian convention in 1825 it looks like a straight line then if you observe the Australian states here so if you are already familiar with Australia the Western Australia here is the Perth then if you see Northern Territory here if you observe carefully Port of Darwin very important then you have the Southern Australia here where you have these areas Adelaide is famous venue for cricketers and then if you observe this is your Queensland Northeastern Australia and this is where you have the Great Barrier Reef and then this is your Queensland this is the North Eastern portion here you have Brisbane you have Rockhampton you have Townsville and several others then you see this new South Wales here right so New South Wales where you have the Canberra the Australian capital as well you have Sydney on this coast and then you have Victoria but what you observe is this clear cut straight lines so this is where you have the straight lines prominently into these particular squares right so this is what you say is the classification which looks like a geometrical shape of the boundary so these are the geometrical boundaries that we observe what is this Azu strip it's a land between Libya Chad and Niger so what you observe here this 
this particular strip is also like a straight land here, right? It's in between these countries. It's a inland territory kind of situation where you have a geometric boundary. And there are several other examples of these straight line boundaries, geometric boundaries, which you can yourself look into the world atlas and practice for yourselves. So now, when we have discussed in details about the classification of these boundaries, these theories in this session, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on other aspects of political geography. So stay tuned, stay subscribed, keep sharing the videos and also don't forget to go to our website to check for our paid courses. Best wishes.